Hey guys, uh, Jason here, but you already knew that. So, how's everybody doing? That's, uh, I guess you'll have to tell me in the comments, huh? So, I, uh, I go to the doctor this morning. I go to my pain doctor. I have to, I go to four different doctors here. And, uh, so I went to the pain doctor. I have to go see the pain doctor once a month. Uh, they obviously don't trust me to, uh, you know, get refills on my painkillers because, you know, I'm like a, an adult and stuff. So they're so worried about me overdosing that uh, they think I couldn't just do it with my uh, prescription I pick up every month because that would just be, you know, crazy. I could just take them all the first day, but that's all right. Nothing I can do about it. So I, uh, I go there and she goes to take my blood pressure. And this doctor, they never ever have taken my blood pressure before. I guess she said they did it once, so it must have been like my first visit. But, um, <clears throat> so she takes my blood pressure. She's got, she's got this real big cuff for the fat guy arm, you know, for my manly fat guy arms. So I, uh, I was just talking to her and I said, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know how they talk about that obesity epidemic. She's like, what? Here's the thing about the obesity epidemic. I've heard it from on independent news and, and major news for years now. They keep talking about this obesity epidemic. And when you hear that, you think everybody looks like me, right? Like some, some fat guy walking around or fat woman. And uh, here's the thing. It's, it's funny because I don't think there's really an obesity epidemic like, like they want you to think at least. Like, yeah, are, are people more out of shape and, and heavier. Yeah. I would say, yeah, let me fix this. Seem, it seems like it's crooked. I think that's better. Meh. So, um, yeah, are, are more people out of shape? Yeah, there's probably, but you also have more people that are in shape because, you know, they always compare to like the days back, you know, like when my parents were kids back in the fifties and the sixties. You know, when, when people were just thinner because everybody did manual labor. And, uh, you know, fast food places weren't on every corner and we didn't have microwaves and stuff like that. So, yeah, people were people were thinner. and uh, <clears throat> But you also didn't have, like, fitness people everywhere like we do now. There wasn't a gym in every city. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I I'm talking to her and I'm like, yeah, they, they, you know... The obesity epidemic, she's like, I don't know what that is. And I've, I've said it to my doctor there. I've said it to all my doctors, all four of them that I go to here in town. None of them have ever heard of it. They don't know anything about it. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, you know, people, there are more illnesses that are that are related to people being overweight. But the thing is, the way they, they, they uh, the way they present it is that uh, everybody looks like, you know, is like as big as me or bigger. And, uh, <clears throat> and, but here's the thing, if none of my doctors ever know where the large cuff is, right? Where the, where the big, for, for people with bigger arms, can't ever find it. They have to, or they dust it off, or they only have one. But some of them don't even have, have it at all. Uh, then when I go and I, you know, remember Freddie that used to be on the channel here with me, he, he gets married, I think it was earlier this year. <clears throat> so... My wife and I are going, I don't, I don't own any nice clothes because I don't dress, I don't dress nice because I don't care. And especially with all my medical problems, I'm looking for comfort. So I wear a t-shirt like I'm wearing now. And this t-shirt's actually a size too big for me because I lost a bunch of weight, but I have these two hernias on my stomach, which stick out. So if I wear a size smaller, um... Yeah, it just, it tugs in my stomach, but the rest of it fits. It's it's not comfortable. So I just wear this thing because it's real loose on me. Even though, as you can see, I'm swimming in it. And it was just washed uh, last weekend. So, <clears throat> and I just wear it, you know, when I go out or, you know, whatever, for an hour here and there. So, I go and... Um, uh, so, so yeah, so all these doctors, so, so we had to go get, I had to get something nice for the wedding. 
So we go to Walmart because, you know, that's where everybody who's poor goes. Uh, it's, where, it's where we all go. So Walmart has no big person clothes. Now Walmart, which capitalizes on anything that anybody can sell and puts everybody out of business, doesn't have big and tall sections anymore. Neither did Target. Neither did any store in town had anything that was even close to my size. They, the, the largest they had I could find was 38s and 40 pants. I found a shirt that barely fit me, and I went ahead and took it and just stretched it out. We, we washed it and then just hung it, hung dry it, to kind of let the weight, you know, stretch it out a bit. So it, it fit me, it fit me all right by the wedding. <clears throat> and I had to go up to Visalia, which is like a 40-minute drive. And it's like, because they have a mall there, and I guess the, one of the malls, and even there, you, you, the only big and tall store I could find was at, I think it was at uh, JCPenney. So I ended up finding a pair of pants, which didn't fit me right. I had to get a pair that was too big, because they had a, such a small selection. And it's like, if, if everybody's so big and fat, how come nobody's selling them the clothes? It's because people aren't as big and fat as they like to make it out to be. So, so yeah, so I'm, I just, I don't know, I just, they talk about that, and then they talk about, they also talk, like, talk about the opioid epidemic. Everybody's on painkillers, and I'm, I'm like, it's more of a freedom epidemic, in my opinion. It's like, if somebody wants to go get high on painkillers, it's their business, you know? It's like, it's just so, it's aggravating for me that I have to get up, go to the doctor every month, just so they can just say, how, you know, how, how are you doing? Or is, is, are the painkillers working? I'm like, yeah. And then they just write me a prescription and then I have to go get it filled. And then here in California, they make it, they make you get it the last day of the prescription. So if you go out of town or anything and you have to get it at that pharmacy, you can't go to a different pharmacy. So yeah, if you get it, if you get the prescription and then you go, <clears throat> like if you want to go out of town, you have to map everything out. My wife, had, we have to go to a, 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 a thing in Southern California in September, and I'm like, and it's on a certain day. It's a, for her family because uh, her uh, her grandfather passed, and um, so we have to go down in September. And I'm like looking at seeing when I have to fill this prescription for my uh, for my painkillers because they make it so you so you know you'll run out. And and if you and then I like if you go to the corporate I go to a family farm I go to a mom and pops called like Family Pharmacy I think, and it's it's got two locations here in town thank goodness and if I don't do corporate pharmacies if, if I don't have to and and they and they and they'll fill it on the thirtieth day, but some of those corporate pharmacies they won't fill it until the first day. Oh excuse me. <sighs> okay, sorry. And and I've gone up there and they and they were like they're like I can't fill it till till tomorrow. I'm like yeah, but I need the pills in the morning when I get up. <clears throat> and then they don't even fill it till like one in the afternoon. And you've already taken one or two doses that you should have had. But no, they're like no, no. I just sit there and argue with the pharmacist a couple of years ago before I switched to the independent pharmacy. And uh, yeah, he was just he was just giving me all sorts of trouble. And you just you, you just get tired of it. I'm like I'm an adult. I don't I don't need anyone to hold my hand and take my, my my medicine. It's it's just it's ridiculous. But yeah, I just think that whole opioid epidemic is ridiculous, and people blaming the doctors for taking too many. And it's like you know, if you take too many, it's your fault. You know, have some common sense. Ask questions. It's just I don't know. I think I think they should be sold over the counter like Advil, and uh, you saw or, or or sold behind the counter at least. So you and you and you can take buy as much as you want, but you have to sign a paper saying you know that uh, you could uh, drop dead if you take too many. Like anything else, you 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 take the risk. But I don't know. No one cares what I think. I guess. But uh, anyway, I just recently finished playing Mad Max again. I really like that game. I've been in a car mood lately, and uh, <clears throat> I've been wanting to. Um, I've been wanting to. You know, I wish I had a house where I could. You know, sit around. I'd be working on restoring a car all the time or something. Um, I have a '74 Dodge van that I I need to put some work into. 
just to get it, you know, running again. Well, it runs, but it needs a new battery and a tire, and I need to get it registered. But, uh, and it's been sitting a while, but it's got a good motor in it. But anyway, I've been playing Mad Max recently, and, um, I sold some of that, uh, stuff, uh, to a friend of mine, um, that, uh, all that yard sale stuff I had. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. I, I haven't been doing a whole lot lately. I've, I've been trying to get out to go do more yard selling, but now our car, uh, the starter's going out, so I gotta get that fixed. Because yard selling, you do a lot of starting and stopping. But, um, but yeah, the, uh, uh, but yeah, I, I, I went and played through Mad Max. I'm just, I don't know, there's just nothing to play right now. Is there anything you guys can recommend? Because I'm just, I'm getting bored with uh, what's going on with all the games. So, but anyway, yeah. I, otherwise, yeah, I've been, I, I tried, you know, I, I tried to give one of the Super Nintendos to my stepdaughter. She came home from, uh, uh, from college over the weekend and we went to Denny's on, on Saturday and, and I was telling her, I was like, hey, do you want, you want one of those Super Nintendos or, a, you know, you can take the PlayStation 2 back with you. She's like, yeah, I want the Super Nintendo. Then my wife's like, I don't want her playing, you know, I don't want her playing games. She has enough to do out there. So she wouldn't let me uh, send the uh, Super Nintendo back with her with, with uh, Super Mario World. So, uh, yeah, so I guess uh can't do that. Plus, she might be switching dorms. They put her in some fancy dorm with a bunch of, uh, with like a Norwegian, sw or a, no, it was an Icelandic swimmer. A Viking swimmer is her roommate. How weird is that? Here in, up in Fresno, of all places. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just rambling on today. I, I just, uh, I'm getting ready to start a diet again. I got to, uh. Drop another. I'm gonna try to drop just another like 20, 25, 30 pounds. Uh, you know, I know I need to lose a lot more. It's it's that's not the point. I just I feel it's easier if I put it in my head as I need to just lose 20 pounds, and then you kind of stay focused better that way. And then when you're done with that, you're like, oh, I need to lose you know 20 pounds. I remember Richard Simmons saying something years ago. God, this is like probably 30 years ago. I saw him in some interview when he was when he was still pretty young. And he was saying that he was always losing five pounds when he would lose weight. And uh, that was a real interesting way. It's like kind of a you trick your mind into doing it. So, <clears throat> so yeah, that's what I, that's what you got to kind of do with diets when you're, when you suck at them like I do. I saw that uh, uh, Rich at Review Tech USA, I was watching his channel and he, he dropped a bunch of weight and it's pretty inspiring when you see that because he was about as he was heavier than I was at one point and my, my heaviest and uh yeah he's he's a lot he's like 270 something now which is pretty good it's good for him and uh yeah he said he didn't he'd like cheated like once or something on his diet or didn't and I'm like yeah I wish I could say the same when I do diets but anyway um yeah I'm still getting used to talking to the camera again in case you haven't noticed I used to be a lot better at this um I find that my, my, my thoughts are a uh, little out of focus and I'm all over the place, but I'm working on it. Uh, maybe next time I'm going to put some notes down and I'll just kind of work off of that. But uh, yeah, it's just, I don't do a lot with video games. I, 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 I still play video games, but it's like, I, I don't get out and buy them as much. And I try to, uh, I try to, you know, I, I just, I want to get out yard sailing again and hopefully I can find stuff, but. But yeah, that's what I've been playing. I played through Mad Max. It took me about a week and a half of just sitting there. I just love collecting stuff in that game and building a car. And I and I wish they would. And I and I watched this whole thing on it on on how the game was made without the the guy who created Mad Max wanted to make a game, but uh, Warner Brothers went behind his back or or not behind his back, but they just they just did it without his without his consent because they had the rights and they went ahead and made the game. And, uh, he was, uh, it, 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 they took all of his notes that he had been, because I guess when he made Mad Max Fury Road, the fourth movie, it was supposed to have an older Mel Gibson in it, and it was just supposed to be a continuation, but then he ended up making it into, like, a reboot, or a revisit, or however you want to say it, and it was exactly the same movie, except 
they put a younger Max in, and he still said he was used to be a cop, but if you look at the timeline, he was too young to have lived in the days when they still had cops. He should have been, like, you know, as old as Mel Gibson is now. Um, but, yeah, the... But but the movie, but the game, they changed it around, and then Mad Max fans say it didn't feel like Mad Max. Um, kind of felt like Mad Max to me, but I've never looked that deeply into Mad Max. I've always liked the movies, and uh, but you but you build a car. I just I enjoy building the car, and I enjoy uh, running around and collecting stuff. And it's got the same combat as you got in like the Batman games. Nose is itchy. Okay, sorry. But, um... <clears throat> so, so yeah, so you collect that, and, you, and then you run... And the side quests are just drive something here or there. Side quests aren't very good in the game. But the story's kind of cool. It's not a real complicated, deep story. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's fun. It's, it's fun to collect and upgrade. That's, that's basically what the game is, is all about. You're just... You're upgrading your car, and you're upgrading yourself, and then you're collecting stuff so you can do the upgrades. That's what the game. That's what the game is. So, not really deep. They, they could have. They, they they could have put some uh, more uh, story into like the uh, into the side quest, you know, and actually did like 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 the Witcher did because the Witcher is the same kind of thing. You're upgrading. You're trying to find all the stuff for your potions, like Witcher Three. I'm talking about. So, so you're, so you're, but you're traveling to every location to do it, and then you're finding parts to a recipe, and then you got to find the stuff for the recipe and buy it or buy it or whatever to to have enough to make everything, to make all your potions and stuff, and your and your weapon buffs or your armors and things like that. It's that's what I like about The Witcher Three too, and the, but they have a really good story on top of it, and you're doing like they had the story with the Baron and the dead baby and. They had that, and then you, and then, yeah, and then they had all these bosses. And the thing about Mad Max is that all the bosses are the same. They're just reskinned, but every boss is the same boss for the most part. It's just some big dude in some sort of road warrior outfit and swinging a big old club, like a mace club, like a big long arm handled mace, which, yeah. And they're slow as hell, and the same attack, you, have to, you, you attack them all the same way for the most part. Except later in the game, they have a couple variations with, like, two different bosses. And, uh, <clears throat> and the final boss, you end up, you know, blowing up his car, and then he gets your car, that he, excuse me, the interceptor from the original Mad Max uh, series, because he takes your car in the beginning of the, of the game. That's why you got to build the other car, and then you basically you have no car, and you're on the side of the, you're on the ground, and you're throwing these those uh, things that they throw in the movies that explode, and uh, you have to basically throw it at him a couple times, and then that's it. the 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 final The final boss is kind of it's kind of a joke. It's hard. The part that really frustrated me is you you have to do this race to get so you can get the V8 engine called the Big Chief, and you're going through. And you have to just, you have to get, start throwing those things at, at you, you throw the, the it's, they're called thunder poons, that's what they're called. You got to throw them at all these other cars, because you got like a person in the back of your car that throws them for you. She's like this fighter you pick up in the, in the story. And then you got to fight her to the death at the end, and you end up having to kill her. But you got to throw it at the, at this one guy's car who, who's, he, he's like the, the mini boss or whatever you want to call it. He's one of the guys. He's got the engine you need, so you're doing it in this race, and you only have like seven minutes or something to do it, because it's one of that more of that timed bullshit. So, because they put some explosive on the back of your car, so you're throwing it, and I just kept hitting stuff, and the track is like so twisty, and every time you touch something, the car goes flying around the place, and uh, it's just kind of frustrating, but. Yeah, you gotta like get him like right away. You gotta go in and then throw a bunch of those uh, thunder poons at him, blow him up, and then yeah, then the story progresses. But yeah, I was getting a little frustrated with it because I had I forgot how to do it and I hadn't played in a while. And so yeah, because you only have a certain amount of thunder poons, but 
in this in this part of the game you have unlimited so I forgot once you once you realize you got unlimited you just keep throwing them as much as you can every time they and they have like a a reset every time you throw one like because she has to reload the, the gun to shoot them so so yeah so you have to just sit there and just keep knocking these cars that are in your way just blowing them up then you th keep throwing them at the uh, at the boss so because he's driving he's driving away everybody you know I don't know what am I talking about here I'm going on and on so yeah I uh, <clears throat> I don't know I'm thinking about getting a new camera because I'm using my phone and I can't I want to use my old camera because my old camera is just it's really old it, it was it was starting to age when I when I had it when I first started doing the show years ago and I want to, but I was thinking about getting something like, it's like a $200 camera or a hundred and something dollars. Something that's not super expensive. That's going to break me. Cause I recently, I finally got a credit card and I haven't had a credit card in years cause I'm broke, but I got a secured credit card finally. And, uh, I got a little money and I'm, I'm real, you know, and it, it's fine when you get a credit card, it raises your credit score like 64 points. And, uh, I thought that was pretty cool cause my credit's bad enough, but um, anyway, but yeah, I got a credit card, so I'm thinking like, you know, I could get a uh, better camera now and spend a little money with on it instead of uh, instead of using my phone or using my old camera, which doesn't have as good a. I want a, I want better video quality. So anyway, guys, uh, I think that's about it. I'm gonna do a. I'm gonna. I'm thinking of tomorrow. I want to do a. Uh, I want to talk about my. Uh, some video game memories as a kid with my parents because both of my parents have passed. My mom died in 2003 and my dad died in 2016. And, uh, yeah, they were, uh, it's, it's funny because like when you're a kid in the eighties, uh, late seventies and then through the eighties and early nineties, you, uh, you know, we were all there for the beginning of, of, you know, video games were becoming popular. Because in the late 70s, we had an Atari. We had like a six button, a six switch, you know, with the, with the wooden, uh, uh, with the, with the wood pan, the plastic wood paneling, whatever they call it. Wood grain, that's what they call it. Uh, and then you had the, uh, then they had, I let, years later, I had an Atari Junior, which looked like a wedge. It was really, it looked, I thought it was real space age back then. But then you get the, you know, then we got the Nintendo and then, I, by the time Super Nintendo came out, I was like almost graduating high school, so I never really got into it at the time, even though I love the system now. But uh, <clears throat> and back then, you were, we were encouraged to not play video games uh, as we got older, and I kind of I kind of got out of it as a kid when I got older. I, I still read comic books though and watched um, uh, cartoons, so. Love me some Japanimation. That's what we called it back then. We didn't say anime. But yeah, I used to, I grew up watching Macross and, uh, which was also, uh, it was Macross in Japan and then they, they, they redid, they reworked everything for Robotech out here and we, we you know, I grew up watching Robotech and, uh, watched a lot of, uh, uh, Captain Harlock as a kid too. So, love Captain Harlock. I need. I want to. I'm going to do a video on my on my comic collection on what I have left because I I sold most of it when I had my shop, but I kept like all of my important comics. I have like uh, I have like my X Men number four. I've anyway. I'll I'll do a video on it and I uh, I'll post that uh, pretty soon here. So uh, anyway, guys, um, that's pretty much it for today. Uh, just another just another vlog and. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll make some more stuff. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to do some, uh, st I'm going to do the video game st memory stuff. And uh, I I'll get better at talking at the camera again. <laughs> I have to kind of think about it. It seems like once I get into a topic, I'm okay, but I'm a little messed up. Like right now, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. And uh, I guess I just have to prepare better. Anyway, um, yeah, if you guys have an idea on a good camera, a decent camera that's not going to break me, uh, let me know. So anyway, thanks. Bye.